Hi everyone, my name is Laura and today I will talk about a ground truth system for indoor localization based on the HTC Vive, which is a motion capture system designed for virtual reality applications. There are multiple ways to locate a device, which in localization systems is usually called a tag. Today we will focus on anchor-based indoor localization. But what is an anchor, you might ask? Well, anchors are helper devices with fixed and known locations, which help us locate the tag by exchanging messages with it. We can use these messages, for instance, to estimate the distance between each anchor and the tag, and then compute the location of the tag at the intersection of circles centered at the anchors, and with their radius equal to the distance between each anchor and the tag. We usually estimate the distances based on the time of flight of the signal or the received signal strength. There are also other ways to locate a tag using anchors, for instance, based on the angle of arrival of a signal. What these methods have in common that's relevant for our work is that they use the locations of anchors in the localization algorithm. So that's what we understand by anchor-based localization methods. In an indoor localization system, we usually place the anchors along the walls of a room or of multiple rooms, depending on our setup. The anchors are installed by an administrator who measures their location relative to one another, and the anchors usually remain fixed afterwards. One way to measure the location of the anchors is to choose the origin of a local coordinate system, for instance in one corner of the room, and then measure the coordinates of each anchor relative to it. When working with localization system, it is crucial to determine how accurate they are. To compute the accuracy of a localization system, we need to get the ground truth location of a number of test points. We obtain the location error as the difference between the location returned by the system and our ground truth location. The cheapest method to do this is to manually measure the ground truth location of some test points, similarly to how we measure the location of the anchors before. However, we would have to do this for a large number of test points, which is very time consuming. And if we change the room in which we conduct the experiments, we have to measure the location of other test points all over again. Besides, having furniture inside that room makes these measurements all the more difficult. So the manual method of measuring ground truth locations might be cheap in terms of money, but it is expensive in terms of work involved. Moreover, it's inflexible when we need to move the setup to another room, and it is prone to good old human errors. An alternative to avoid all this hard work is to use a high-end motion capture system, which consists of multiple cameras that can track a target and can achieve millimeter level accuracy. The problem is that they are very expensive. A four camera setup that can merely cover a 5 by 5 meter area can cost tens of thousands of euros. So is there something in between that we can use? One option is to use a consumer grade motion capture system, like the HTC Vive which was designed for virtual reality video games. It can track the headset or other accessories with millimeter or centimeter level accuracy, and it is very easy to use. The entire set can still be pricey, but for our setup we need only two base stations and one tracker. So this setup costs slightly under 1000 euros, which is significantly cheaper than high-end motion capture systems. One of its drawbacks, however, it is that it is not a scientific measuring tool, so it poses some problems, such as unpredictably large errors, which we will see how to handle later. Using the HTC Vive as a ground truth system isn't a really new idea, because previous studies have looked into its accuracy and precision for this purpose. But we want to provide a framework on how to actually use it for indoor localization. The key idea is that the tracker will be co-located with the tag of our target localization system. In this paper, we chose to test the ground truth system on ultra-wideband localization, which uses trail alteration to compute the location of the tag and has an average accuracy in a 2D space of 10 to 20 centimeters. So our ground truth system contains two base stations and one tracker, and the ultra-wideband localization system uses four anchors and one tag. Now, let's set some requirements for our ground truth system. First of all, we shouldn't need to acquire manual measurements anymore. Notice that this setup now also contains the base stations, which are able to track the entire area. This means that it will be easy to follow the tag and the tracker along a certain path. But how about the anchors? 
Ideally, we should not need to manually measure the location either, and we will see how to do this later. Another requirement is that if one day we make another recording, we should be able to overlap and compare data sets acquired inside the same room. This requirement sounds simple, but it can be a bit tricky. The problem is that the localization system returns locations in its own coordinate system relative to the location of the anchors. The HTC Vive similarly returns locations relative to its own base stations, but the problem is that this change from one day to the next. Third, if we change the placement of the anchors and the base stations, we should be, still be able to acquire measurements in the same coordinate system characteristic to the room. In this way, we should be able to try different hardware arrangements with very little effort. To align all measurements to the room's coordinate system, we'll use Procrustes analysis, which finds the optimal linear transformation between two sets of points from different coordinate systems. In these figures, the two sets of points, which we'll call the reference points, are A and B, aligned in that sort of grid. Additionally, we have a larger set of test points, C, acquired in the coordinate system of A. The figure shows the points in their original coordinate systems before the transformation. In this example, we want to map the points in the coordinate system of A to the coordinate system of B. Procrustes analysis finds the rotational component T, which minimizes the Frobenius norm of the difference between the transformed and the target sets of points. After computing the transformation, we apply it on the sets A and C, and we obtain the figure on the right, where the training points are almost perfectly overlapped and the test points follow the original trajectory. So how do we apply this procedure in our ground truth system? We first need a set of reference points, which will be the same for all experiments performed in the same room. At the beginning of each recording, we place the tracker on each of the marked points and save the locations measured by the HTC Vive. We will later align datasets using the measurements acquired at these points. To avoid manually measuring the location of the anchors, we use the HTC Vive to get the locations of ultra wideband anchors by centering the tracker on the anchors and recording their locations. The framework will send the locations of the anchors to the ultra wideband engine, which will use them in the localization algorithm. This also brings the ultra wideband and the HTC Vive measurements in the same coordinate system and allows us to try more anchor placements with very little setup overhead. After these two configuration steps are completed, we can start tracking. The first two steps have to be redone at the beginning of each recording. And even though it seems like quite some work, they take less than five minutes. There are two main reasons why we need to perform these steps before each recording. First, the coordinate system of the HTC Vive is only loosely related to the location of the base stations. So if we do a recording now and another one tomorrow, locations reported by the HTC Vive will be different even if the devices were not moved. Second, when the tracker loses the direct sight to all of the base stations, the locations returned before and after the disconnection will be different even if the tracker hasn't moved. We don't know for sure why the HTC Vive has this behavior since their algorithms are closed source. Fortunately, we can at least detect when a disconnection occurred since the tracker becomes unreachable and we get no locations from the system. If this happens during a recording, we can discard all measurements acquired after the disconnection, and for the next recording, we will repeat the first two steps. This will solve the problem of the changing coordinate system. So now let's see how to our ground truth system performs. First, we want to evaluate the accuracy of the HTC Vive. We marked 48 points inside the room, out of which 40 were placed on a grid on a table, and eight points were marked on two walls. Then we measure their locations relative to each other. We then place the tracker on each of the marked points and obtain location measurements. In order to compute the accuracy of the HTC Vive, we used Procrustes analysis to align the HTC Vive measurements to the ones we measured by hand. If they were identical, Procrustes analysis would yield no errors, so any disparity after the alignment must be due to the measurement errors of the HTC Vive. We acquired in total eight datasets with slightly different base station placements. We found that, on average, 
Errors in the XY plane were sub-centimeter, being slightly higher on the walls. This might be because the walls are at the boundary of the base station's field of view, or because our ground truth measurements might have higher errors near the walls. Second, on the height axis, Z, errors were slightly higher, and this might be because of the high geometric dilution of precision on the z-axis, which isn't really unusual. But slightly more worrying were the maximum errors. Although they usually remained quite low, there were two measurement points on the wall in one dataset, which had an unusual z-axis error of 13.14 cm. This can happen due to bad lighting or the bad placement of base stations, for instance. Even though these large errors don't appear frequently, they can still be damaging when, for instance, we acquire the location of the anchors using the HTC Vive. In that situation, such a large error will propagate itself through the localization algorithm of the ultra-wideband system, leading to significant ultra-wideband errors. To decrease the probability that such large errors go unnoticed, we proposed acquiring the reference dataset, meaning the one that all datasets are aligned to, in ideal conditions. This means with little lighting, no reflective surfaces around, optimal coverage of the area, and so on. Basically, religiously following HTC Vive's guidelines. Then, when we acquire subsequent datasets, we compute the disparity between the current one and the reference dataset after the alignment, and if the disparity exceeds a certain threshold, we can deem the current conditions of the experiment faulty and discard the dataset. This relies on the fact that errors manifest systematically in bad conditions. All in all, the average HTC Vive errors are at least 10 times smaller than the usual ultra-wideband localization errors, so we deem the HTC Vive suitable as a ground truth system for this application. Note also that the ultra-wideband systems have higher accuracy than most anchor-based wireless localization systems. For instance, Wi-Fi or Bluetooth-based ones usually have errors in the range of meters. So now we can proceed to evaluating the accuracy of the ultra-wideband system. We place the ultra-wideband anchors around the test points on the walls from the previous experiment. We chose six reference points around the room. You can find more details in the paper about how to optimally choose them. We do the first two setup steps and then start tracking over the area delimited by the ultra-wideband anchors. The cumulative distribution function of ultra-wideband localization errors from two trials are shown on the left. According to the HTC Vive, the median error of the ultra-wideband system on the X and Y axis is less than 10 cm, and the Z1 is slightly higher of about 18 cm. This is again because of the geometric dilution of precision, since the ultra-wideband anchors are placed between heights of 1.6 and 1.8 meters, so within only 20 cm of each other. The figure on the right shows one of the tracks in the XY plane. The ground truth system also records the orientation of the ultra-wideband tag, shown as arrows, which can be useful to get insights into, for instance, how the orientation of the device influences ultra-wideband tracking errors, but which we leave as future work. In conclusion, we presented a relatively cheap ground truth system with sub-centimeter average accuracy based on the HTC Vive. We proposed a framework on how to use it for anchor-based indoor localization in order to easily compare datasets and quickly test new hardware arrangements. In the future, it would be useful to investigate in which situations these large HTC Vive errors occur so that we know how to avoid them. Also, we could eliminate the need to acquire the anchor locations and we could instead use the ground truth and the pairwise distances between the tag and the anchors to compute them, albeit with possibly higher errors. This work can also be used as a starting point for a joint ultra-wideband Vive localization system, since the two components can complement each other. For instance, the Vive can acquire very accurate locations, but works only if the base stations can see the tracker. On the other hand, ultra-wideband works also in non-line-of-sight and can improve the availability of the HTC Vive in case the tracker disconnects from the VR system. That was it. Thank you for your time and I can't wait to answer your biting questions.